in a fancy photo, you can create all kinds of gradient colourful effects very quickly. I'll show you how. What you need to do, create a layer. So layer and new layer. And with that, just go to the gradient tool. So select the gradient tool in the tools panel and drag across. Another great way of doing this, go to the swatches. You've probably got lots of different swatches, different color designs here. And this is in the gradient section. I'm gonna go with this one, a rainbow color. Now I could modify this further if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna resize this layer. So I'm just gonna resize it, make it very, very like that. Once you've done that, now I'm gonna keep it so it's attached to the top and the bottom. But also what I can now do is I can apply a filter effect to it. So filters, and then go down here to distort and shear. I find shear is really quite a powerful filter. Slightly odd filter, I have to say. You can't resize it, which would be nice. But what you can do, you can add some nodes or points here. And you can see as you do that, you can just drag this. Click there again and just add another one. And you can go all the way down. You can slightly warp it. Now you'll notice there's a problem with this. It's not really doing much at this point. It does seem to have a weird sort of feature this. Well, I've noticed one thing to do is go to layer and then just go to rasterize and trim. Just doing that. Now go to the shear, filters, distort and shear. And here, now I'm just going to apply again. I'm just going to click here. And now you can see it just really goes full wavy. It's very weird. I don't know why it does that, but that seems to be the way it works. And you don't want to push it too far. So I just want to make sure I don't go over the edge because what happens, it cuts it off, which, you know, is okay, but it's not really what I want to do. So I'm just going to create a nice wavy design like that and then click apply. Well, at this point, I can now resize it again. I want a fairly thin design, very, very thin. And of course, like I say, you could use all kinds of different gradients. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to duplicate this design. And I'm just going to again keep it, make sense it's on the bottom. You can see it snaps there very nicely. Go to the move tool, and there's the move tool, and press return or enter on the keyboard. And with that, you get this panel popping up. Well, you can resize things, you can go with the scale. I'm just going to keep it the same. I'm going to use this, the horizontal, but duplicate. So let's just put that on. I'm just going to say, let's just try it initially 33. And you can then see if you do that, you can see then by going four, mil four millimeters fairly small. You can also, of course, increase it. Now, once you've got that, because what I want to avoid is any gaps in it. You could, of course, create one with gaps, but I'm just going to go with full on next to each other. And I'm just going to resize that number of copies to say 63 and then click OK. All that does creates lots and lots of layers. But you could do this manually, of course. You could hold down the alter option key and then drag and just duplicate it. Well, now go to layers. And you can see what you've got. You've got all these pixel layers. And you can go all the way down the bottom, hold down the shift, and then you've got them all selected. Another option is you could go here, select, and let's see, select all layers. I'm not certain why it's tucked away there. Personally, it should be in the layer menu, I think. But still, once you've got that, you can now group it. So right click, and then go down here to group. And now, right click again, and then you can go to rasterize or rasterize and trim as well if you want to use that. Now, I am just going to resize this because I've just noticed I'm over the edge. And this is always the thing. As soon as you do any sort of anything like that rasterization, you will seem to end up losing anything that's gone over the edge. I don't want that. But again, right click and then down here to rasterize or rasterize and trim. So it's done. Well, you've got this very intense wavy design. And of course, you can manipulate this even further. You can just drag this out now. You obviously can push it too far, but you can just drag this out. You can go the other way and you can fill the entire screen. And again, you can always go to layer and again, rasterize and trim and it will just cut off at that point. But also what you can do is you can apply some other effects. I mean, this creates a very intense wavy design. You can always go to filter and repeat shear. Just try it. Just apply it like that. Sometimes it creates an interesting effect, sometimes it doesn't. But there's also other ones as well. So filters, and then go to distort. You could try maybe mesh warp. That's quite a nice one. Or maybe mirror. Or again, shear obviously could create a different one. Twirl, deform's a good one, but I'm just gonna go with mesh warp. So mesh warp, 
And then you can see you can manipulate that, crunch this in and create some really extreme sort of grading effects, which would be very difficult if you were just using a single gradient. It'd be very hard to do this, especially since you can't extend the actual gradient panel, particularly to add multiple stops like this. And double click, and then you can add this, and you can distort this in different ways. And double click again, distort this in different ways, and you can see you get this sort of design. One thing I really like to do to discover all kinds of really odd effects is not just use this, but it's go here. So you've got destination. Destination's great, so you can see the change, but I like to do this, source. And you think, well, that's very useful. So now what can I do? I just drag it. And you think, hmm, not very effective. And you can drag this down, you can go to all these different, eh. I just love the fact that I can just apply this and then I can apply it. So using source, click apply. And then you can get some really weird and wonderful distorted designs. And you can then manipulate further, go to the move tool there and resize it, distort it and much, much more. Or maybe even combine it. Now you might not want to combine it once you've used this warping. So if you want, you can always undo all that. Let's just undo it. So it's back to that. Now it would probably be better it would be to create a document that was square. A square document makes it so much easier to do this, but Hold down the Ultra Option key and just drag. And then you can rotate it. Or use various other transforms as well, of course. And now I'm just going to just drag this so it's a little bit of resizing. You can say I drag it over here. Now go to the last panel, go here and you've got overlay, difference. And you can see you can get this very intense design. So difference, I'm going to go with that. So select both of those, then layer, and then down to merge selected. So merge selected, got this end result. And what you can do with this is you can distort this again. If you want to use it, you can try it with this one. Repeat mesh warp. I always love to just try different effects with it. Or use deform. That's a great one as well. Or distort it using maybe twirl. And that's another great one. Hope you found this technique of interest. I think you can use it in numerous ways. Maybe use it as textures, great backdrop, overlay on various images and combine it with other designs as well, maybe for 3D effects as well. Really great with like textures, etc. Comments, always great to hear from you. Will you be using this? Did you find the video of interest? Did you find it too long, too short? Always great to know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Always add new videos all the time about Affinity Photo, mainly but also about other applications such as Photoshop and other ones as well. Bye.